Sex is one topic that most people shy away from talking about and it's been classified as a taboo. Parents find it hard to talk to their kids about it. Religious scholars hardly include it in their lectures and somehow a very slight percentage of schools offer sex education. I, I think the, the role would be just moving from a place of authenticity and being intentional about parenting and that would include um, having conversations that are age appropriate. Because um, then that would then demystify a lot of this need for that we desire to connect. Sex before marriage is very hard. I know. Truth be told, it's very hard. It's possible, yeah? But it's very hard because, especially when you're in a relationship and you're, ex you're exclusive, wait, is it? yeah, exclusive, mm -hmm. the two of you. And then you venture into it, uh, and uh, you just want to expound everything in the relationship. Yeah. There's always a next level thing. So for me, it's very hard, but it's possible. I mean, as a therapist, I'm sorry. If I come in and my client is, is talking about the ways that they are engaging in premarital sex, my, my job, what I am ethically bound in as part of my profession is my work is not to judge. No, it's not. But it's to explore with a client what is the impetus, what is the reasoning, what is fueling this behavior to engage in premarital sex. To be honest, if you're supposed to speak of how youths right now we are, you get into a relationship and the first thing <coughs> they expect from, from us is sex. How we view a relationship is very, very different. different. So like I get, I don't think there's a lady who gets into a relationship and the first thing is like, okay, sex, sex. For us as parents, uh, for we need to create avenues that the boys or the girls can have so that they don't have the time to think about such stuff. Uh, most of the time, this is things that come with an idle mind. If you don't use your mind positively, your mind is going to occupy you in a negative way. This notion that women are not after sex is just silly. Because I know like a billion and one chicks who, who even want it before you want it. You get? It's not about gender. It's nothing about gender. Even when it comes to money, I know some guys usually want money from chicks. And I know chicks who want sex from guys. So it's just basically on personal opinions. There are two-way perspective of how we youths view, uh, view sex because of the male side and the female side. So it really affects relationships because there are people who are always expecting sex and also there's pressure. So if you're in a relationship and you've been in for eight, six months, you, you haven't had sex, people ask you, is that love? What are you doing there? You know, so I think it's such a pressure and even the societal standards that we grow up in right now, they make sex to be okay. Like the way someone was saying it's a conjugal right and it's supposed to be in marriage, we've, we've thrown that away. It just goes down to you as an individual. Mm -hmm. Whether there's a law saying you're, you, don't have to, you should not have sex before marriage, it's up to you to decide because you know the consequences, yeah? You know there's probably diseases, you know there's probably having a kid before marriage. Do you want to risk that? Both Islam and Christianity doesn't condone sex out of marriage or any other form of fornication for that matter. Sex is a very spiritual thing. Once you do sex with someone, a piece of you goes. So like if you like end up sleeping with like, with like 50 people, a piece of you goes, like 50 pieces of you have gone. So by the time you get to getting married, you don't have anything to give. You get, because by the time you get to that one person who's ready to commit and sit, settle down with you and loves you for who you are and just wants you and no one else, that's the time you find that it's hard for you to commit because you have nothing to give. It's like you've been giving your way self too much, you don't see your worth, so you honestly don't think you have something to give that other person who's giving himself to you, so that's my view. I think you just be patient. My understanding is relationships that do not lead towards um, a commitment, a commitment, maybe we talk about marriage, 
um, can be incredibly problematic, especially if the people involved have had like um, several several relationships that don't work. It depends with the individual really on your views about sex and also it starts, personally I would say, it starts with knowing yourself when it comes to sex, knowing what you like, knowing what you don't like and setting yourself boundaries that are healthy. You know, there's someone who can get in a relationship and they're okay to have sex one month in. Someone's okay to have sex two weeks in. Someone is okay to wait a whole year or three years or wait until marriage. So I think sex is just, we can't say sex and put everyone under the same umbrella. It's more individualistic on what you like and what's comfortable for you. You need to know if you're going to do this, like she said, it's, mm -hmm. it's the two of you. Once you decide, okay babe, let's not do this, mm -hmm. let's wait. You can actually do that and wait. But again, you can choose the contrary and say, like, let's do this because this is, uh, we don't need to waste time. Let's just do this because we want to do this. So I feel like it's a, it's a personal matter. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really fall on let's not do it before marriage or let's do it before marriage because it's very different. Everyone has different perceptions and beliefs. And, and I respect it uh -huh. more when it comes from the man. I feel I like now I don't have to be under pressure as in, you know, because women are always under pressure, you guys, you have to be really. Very like, yeah, Very maybe if I don't have <laughs> sex with him, he will leave, he will get him someone. someone. Yes. Yeah. What once was hidden is now out in the open, on campuses, in schools, and all over social media platforms. There is an impact that, that um, grinds on the perception of self, um, you know, um, issues of self-esteem, issues of self-worth, you know, by the time you have, and especially if they are important and significant relationships that are not working out, you're going to ask yourself those questions. What is wrong with me? Um, am I attractive enough? Is there something about me that is hindering me from creating meaningful relationships? Which is a very slippery slope. Um, because unless those questions are answered within a space that is safe and, judge and non-judgmental, then it will spiral into, into problematic behaviors. I don't think you should sleep with each and every boy that tells you that he likes you, but if you're in a committed relationship and it's just you two, I don't see the harm if you're being safe. It's also hard to know who is real and who yeah, is not. not yeah. Because um, a person can know <coughs> what you want, yeah? Mm -hmm. He will really know this is what Jens is up for. But he will masquerade as what I want. But you get two, three months into the relationship, and then you just like as you can. Like you get what you want yes, from yeah. you, and then, then and then it's also because um, we've had we were discussing this yesterday mm -hmm. um, because we were saying nowadays it's more about the physique, mm -hmm. what a person looks like, mm -hmm. than what who the person is. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sex. It doesn't have to be like the priority in your relationship because. Listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen. Sex listen. and relationships are they, they're two sides of the same coin. Because if you get in a relationship, there's something you like about that person, whether it be a boy or a girl. There's, a, there's an attraction. There's um, electricity, I've heard it called electricity. You see, you see them, yeah, you see? Yeah, exactly, you want them. You want them in every aspect of you know, their being. So sex is a result of that. So once you go through sex, you're like, this is my person. I can rely on this person, I can trust on this person. Um, you shouldn't wait for someone you are legally binded to. Because in case you're not compatible, in case there's other problems. So are you testing first? Yeah, so you know what you like, you know what other people like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, that's my belief. And also, I think it's a natural thing. Sex is a big deal of marriage. It's like a big part of marriage. Mm -hmm. So you can't just hope for the best. When you have a society where people begin to disrobe, you get more and more of sexual deviancy, which leads to venereal diseases, birth defects, cervical cancers, and many others that are not treatable. This is why Allah gave us Sharia in Islam to protect us from our own self. If we follow it, we are safe. If we don't, we have ourselves to blame. Let me first of all give you guys a shocking statistic, huh? that 99% of chicks have two men in their lives constantly. The guy they are shagging and the guy they should be shagging. So guys, eh, you never know who you are at any point. That's number one. You don't know if you're the guy being shagged or the guy she's supposed to shag. 
So if you enter a relationship thinking that you're the only guy, yeah, I'm sorry, Mazi, for you. Do you feel seen? Do you feel heard? Do you feel honored? Do you feel validated in that relationship? Does that relationship build your existing value system? Or does it erode your value system? Sex moves things so fast. As in, before you notice, like before you, you know it, you're already so clingy and like Kawinzi is your property the whole time, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. Kawinzi, I'm sorry, but I have no, to use okay. your other you need for this. So now, for me, sex before marriage is a no no. Mm -hmm. Yes? And it's something that you must come to agreement between the two of you. The moment it starts, it won't end. Sometimes we'll make the relationship about the sex. Yeah. You understand? You've heard people say, um, I'm not going to leave him, but eh, the sex, no. For the longest time, people have glorified sex in a, in a relationship for no reason whatsoever. Like, nowadays, you ask people who are dating, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you getting from each other? Other than sex, like remove sex from the equation. What are you guys getting from each other? And they go zero. Whether it's the Muslim world or the Western world, there was once a decency thing and cultural norms that were in place even in the non-Muslim world. If you have clear path on where you want to be, sex shouldn't be an issue anyway. Mm -hmm.